So just got off work. I'm gonna take this thing back to the eighth mile test and tune and see how it does. Got the fueling pretty close to being sorted out. Got a helmet of my own. Got some fancy shoes to help with the narrow pedal space. Didn't really need them, but whatever. <laughs> so we have to avoid short shifting this car like we did last time. And I think I shifted at like 2,500 RPMs from uh, first to second. Since then, I've been going out, doing the tuning, laying it to the floor, getting more comfortable with really getting into it. Keep in mind, we have not messed with anything to do with timing. We're still on the 2010 Camaro uh, base timing table. Have not changed anything there. So we should be able to start adding in timing and getting a little bit more power out of it. We still don't have launch control. We're still on those, those street tires, but we're still gonna have a lot of fun. Let's just see if we can beat that 8.9 at 84 miles an hour. If we could hit an 8.5, we'd be pretty happy with this thing. We're trying to get down to that 8 second mark as close as we can so we can start doing 8 second class, no prep racing. about this just about every single time we go down. 8-5, baby! <laughs> yes! Oh, that's awesome! PB again! I'm getting a feel for this. Don't you guys worry. Just got to keep getting this tuned out in, and then uh, obviously we still have a lot of room to make some more power with this engine, so... Back to the staging lanes we go. Pretty comparable. 
but man, did it feel good. I'm gonna go ahead and park this thing for a minute, let it cool down, probably let them run a pass, and then we'll go back out there, but we gotta let this thing chill out. We actually didn't do too bad, because here's all of our peaks right here. So right there I shifted right about 6,000 RPM, and then going into third, 6,300 RPM, and then when I went into fourth, I was at about 5,800 RPM. Look, I'm only running like four degrees, five degrees of timing in boost. This thing could probably take 10 degrees of timing, no problem, and run through it. If we were doing 10 degrees, we're talking. So basically double the amount of advance that we have. We probably have another 50 horsepower that we don't even have just because of that timing. So I'm gonna see what I can do about figuring that out. Might add just a sprinkle of it since at the very top of the gear it's doing all right. All right, round four. Just made a few changes to see what it does. transmission I swear <laughs> wow. yes there's I mean that there's no way that was a better time that was an awful launch but that no lift shift felt awesome oh hold on in there AR5 because I'm telling you what you're in for a ride in this car <laughs> 857 at 86.79 miles an hour so right now we're kind of I think we've reached our peak unless I just driver mod it and do a little bit better with the launch and getting those shifts to be spot on. If I can do that, then we'll be pretty close to where we want to be. So far, we've already reached the goal for the night doing 8.5 consistently. I mean, we've done 8.5 pretty much the past three passes, no problem. And each time I've kind of driven a little bit differently. The last time was a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> broke something <laughs> man and my tail light came out whoops all right so obviously that does it for the night um, running eight fives pretty consistently but on that last one got a lot of wheel hop on the uh, burnout there and basically ended up smoking the first gear synchro or something I mean every time I put it in first it just wants to pop right back out so Still have the rest of the gears to get it home. I'm gonna have to hunt down to the AR5, see if we can get it tossed in there, and then uh, we'll bring it back out and see if we can keep doing better time. But definitely gonna have to get that wheel hop under control. I'm probably gonna have to end up doing something to make that subframe solid, so that way it doesn't have the rubber bushings, it doesn't move around, whatever, we'll figure it out. But anyways, making improvements, getting better and better. Catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to jump in here real quick. Uh, did a little bit of research on it. And it turns out that the problem with first is probably going to end up being this thrust washer for the first gear synchro. Uh, luckily, there is a upgraded version of it that you can get. Not a super big deal. And then obviously the tail light popping out. I I forgot to put on the the wing nuts, so you know don't don't you know judge me too hard on that. But <laughs> so we really need to get like a Holly Terminator because you see all those little red patches and stuff in the data log for my uh, equivalence ratio error, that E38 is just so fidgety. I mean, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll tune it on the street for a couple of hours, and then it seems like everything's in the green. We're a little bit on the rich side. I mean, more in the light green area. Basically, the darker the red, the leaner it is. The darker the green, the richer it is. We'll be sitting there on kind of the rich side 
when I'm tuning outside of this. And then when I go here, obviously you see all these little red patches. So it's just very inconsistent, very hard to street tune with just because of the way that it's set up. I mean, if, if I had everything optimized for the E38 ECM, then we would be okay. But I don't, and I don't really want to go through optimizing it all if we're going to change over to the Holly Terminator X anyways, sooner rather than later, because it's just, it's, I, I can't get it to work the way that I want it to. There's a lot of solutions. There's a lot of ways to make it work. Don't get me wrong, but I would much rather have something that is not a stock computer that's trying to do stuff for a boosted application. Past that, we have to get that deflection in the rear end fixed. Um, this was bound to happen regardless. Not really a big deal, obviously. It's just we lost first gear, you know. So what? Race it, break it, fix it repeat the thing to take away from it is just because it broke you, i mean what are you going to do get mad about it moan and cry about it i mean you have to fix it that's the only option you can't undo the breakage so if anything ever happens especially when you're out doing stuff like this just move past it and just think about what do we got to do to fix this and get it right back out here again so we can beat this time we're going to end up getting uh a few components that the mustang guys use on the s550s for their wheel hop problems. So there's plenty of things that we can do to fix that deflection. And furthermore, we need to get either coilovers or some decent springs on this thing to keep it from squatting so much. And then we have to get some sort of tire. And then with the Terminator set up, we can have launch control within that. I think that once we do that, we should be able to get to that eight second mark with the 10 pounds of boost just fine. I'm gonna try to get all the parts coming and you know, get this thing fixed so we can get right back out there. So in the meantime, I'm going to put a link in the description and you can check out the t-shirts that I designed myself. Pick one up and maybe you can help us get that Terminator X. Obviously, we're not running rocket ship crazy times. I, I'm just, this is so exciting to be able to take a car that we've built here on the channel and actually go out and do this. I, I mean, the black car was never able to do it. And now here we are, we have a car that we are able to do it. And you best believe that the black car is going to get revamped and we're going to fix the things that are wrong with it. And we're going to get that car out there even harder than this one, for sure. <laughs>